Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm so glad that you're attending the circle meeting today. Um, it's great to have uh, circles going and the guild going. We're a strong bunch and we can keep going amidst COVID and illness and other, other difficulties. So I'm glad you're uh, gathering today and welcome to the meeting. I'm Barbara Doner. I'm the vice president of the, of the guild and uh, glad to have these few minutes with you. Um, I just have a little, a little poem from St. Teresa of Lazo, and uh, I thought maybe it would be a way to start the meeting today. Um, and I need my glasses. Okay. And so St. Teresa, she, may today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where he wants you to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul freedom to sing. Dance, praise, love it is there for every one of us. So I want to pass this on to, um, to Nancy Ann. Are you? Oh, no. Excuse me. I'm going to pass this on to Ginger for a few words about um, the uh, style show. Hello, I'm Ginger Hoon, and I had the privilege of being the director of the style show yet again this year. We have such wonderful fashions that are coming from the thrift store. And even though we're not fully operational yet, we have wonderful donations coming in and we take very good care to make sure that they are clean and of good repair and very stylish. So I invite you to view our style show and that is gonna be March 9th at 1.30. At that time, you can be calling in via live chat if there's something that's going to be returned that the model is wearing and it's going to be sold at the thrift shop, you can give your name to uh, Sherry Berkman and she will make sure that your name goes on that item and that it will be held for you. You can then purchase it either March 10th when we're open or March 16th at our Tuesday sale. And I'm just going to step to the side and let you see what kind of fashions are available through the thrift store. So please come and visit us. Um, we're open every Tuesday through March from 9 to 12. And then we're having a big yard sale on March 20th from 9 till 1 o'clock. So please come and visit us. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Charles Wade, the facility administrator here at Rosa Church, and I'm getting ready to sing a song, This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's all it is. We absolutely love Charles' voice, and one year he gave a concert with his brothers and sisters. 
and or family members, and we hope he'll do that again soon. So today, I'm going to have Ginger Hun come up and Barb Donner, and they are going to show you uh, what's going to be passed out at the Guild Circles tomorrow if you come in person. If you are a shut-in, we have 40 of them, so if you call us, we'll try and get some to you as well. Okay. In Matthew 5, 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Instead, they put it on its stand. It gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Today, each of you will be given a vase and a solar-powered light if you want one. In order for the light to shine, it needs sunlight. If it does not absorb enough light, it cannot shine. In the same way, we need to read God's word, meditate and pray, and even communicate with those who love Jesus. All these things help us to shine for him. This is how it works. You take the solar-powered light and pull the bottom piece off. There is a tab here, and if you pull it straight down, it will also help it shine. Then put the rest of the light inside the mouth of the vase. If you take your light of vase outdoors on a sunny day and let the light shine on it, it should absorb enough light to shine in the darkness of the night. My family and some of our friends really like these lights. We use ours as night lights. It reminds us that Jesus shines in us and through us because he loves all of us and we love him. Finally, to give the vase stability, you can pour some Anna Maria sand into the bottom of it. I put my sand in a quart pitcher with a spout when I do sand projects with my art classes. In the same way, being grounded in the word of God can provide spiritual stability in our lives. There is a song that goes like this. Do either of you sing the light of the world as Jesus? Well, okay, I'm going to say the words then. Ginger, you want to read them for us, please? And I'll hold this. The light of the world is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shines in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Thank you, Ginger and Barb. And now, uh, thank you. And now Charles is going to sing, Charles Wade. We love his whole family, and we've been praying for his daughter, Ariana. And we just think he does a terrific job in our church. And we're thankful for Matt Meehan in the technology booth as well. So now he's going to sing, Jesus Loves Me. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. I'm back again, Charles Wade, singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know, 
for the Bible tells me so. Look to one, to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven gaze to open wide, he will wash away my sins, let his little child come on in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. goodness, aren't we ready for a concert from Charles? <laughs> okay, let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for loving us and wanting us to shine like stars of the universe for you. Please don't let us hide our lights under a bushel. Let us shine with your love, hope, kindness, and joy for all the world to see. Lord, thank you for all those who serve at churches around the world. Please protect us from COVID. Please keep us safe. Please help people's hearts join to pray that the world will be healed of this terrible disease. Comfort those who are grieving, Lord. Bless those who are hurting. Lord, for those who are experiencing joy today, perhaps a daughter's birthday or a granddaughter's birth. We rejoice with them. Place a hedge of protection around us, Father. And Lord, thank you. Help us serve. Enable us to through the power of your spirit. And bless Charles in a very special way for being willing to do this impromptu and a cappella for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. My parents were um, Dr. Roy and Jane Davis. Matt, can you put that first slide up, please? Um, in 1984, the Grand Rapids Press in Grand Rapids, Michigan, did the Davises, Missionaries to the World. And on the left in the picture is my father, um, Dr. Roy Davis, and in the middle is my Aunt Peg, and in the right is um, my Uncle Bud, I believe. So when my grandparents fell in love is when my dad's story began. Do you think that one person can make a difference in this world? Obviously, Mother Teresa did. And my grandmother, Tilly, as a teenager, was praying for a Christian man to marry, someone who loved Jesus with all his heart, someone who was honorable, trustworthy, who would shine for Christ. <laughs> I hope 
as a descendant of theirs that I do the same. And if we think about it, we're all descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in some way. So God blesses us through them as well. Those are Old Testament promises we claim today. But while Tilly was praying for a mate, so was my grandfather, uh, Joseph Davis. And he was praying much the same, Lord, give me an honorable woman who loves you with all her heart, who will help me become all that you have created me to be. Lord, please help this take place. Well, God bless their marriage. And um, Ray was the first child born. I think I might have him a little out of order. Um, but Ray and Agnes Davis eventually served in Pakistan and then Australia. Eventually, he became the head of Team Missions. And I'm hoping next year, some of my cousins who are on the mission field, if they could get a furlough, maybe they would come. But one of the reasons this happened was my grandma wanted to create for them an environment, a learning environment, where spontaneously they would have a desire to serve the Lord. So near Grand Rapids, Michigan, there is a place called Gall Lake, Michigan. They have a wonderful bird sanctuary there called Kellogg's Bird Sanctuary where you can see peacocks. And you can also um, see also other kinds of birds and feed them, or at least they used to have that. So we would go um, there to... Um, in the summers as well, when we were children. But Grandma was the cook. She said, I can't afford, we're a poor family. Joseph is a printer. And I can't afford um, to rent a cottage here. Um, so could you let me be the cook and I will cook for the whole camp? I'm used to cooking for six kids. I think I could handle it. And they said, yes. <laughs> And it was so wonderful. And so every night she said, you're going to go to the meetings, either the children's meetings to her kids, her six kids, or you're going to go to the adult meetings. And every night missionaries or preachers were speaking. And so um, Ray met Evelyn, or I think he, I can't remember if it was Ray or Agnes Davis or Bud and Evelyn Davis, but one of them met their mate there. So I'm going to start with Ray. Can we go to the next slide, Matt, please? And um, he, um, the, in Ethiopia, the, the type of transportation was a bicycle. And so he would go around on a bike while a war broke out. And he and Evelyn were going to be married and um, they were actually going to be married at, at um, the Bible camp at one point, and twice their marriage was canceled because the mission director said that they were too young to know what she was doing, and they wanted them each to serve a year in Africa. Well, my uncle wrote Fire on the Mountain, and um, it's a very good book about all the people who were killed and murdered and all the wonderful ways that God saved him and some of the people. There were two missionaries who were murdered, which was very sad, and they were friends of his. But he eventually, after two years, was able to make it out when peace was declared. And his son, David, uh, and his wife, Mary Davis, um, are on the mission field today. And um, they have a son, Jonathan. And Jonathan and his wife, Jenny, they were serving um, in the war-torn, um, hard-hit area um, in Africa that just held political elections. 
So God has protected them. They love it there. They love serving him there. And they have an ideas workshop. And um, they praise God. So we went down one, two. That's the third generation. I think we're into the fourth generation now. So um, we're thanking God um, for this and for the miracle that he, that Ray survived. Then, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, Matt is going to be putting these online if you would like to read the story. And um, Bev has been helping us, a technology expert Matt has, and my sister Bonnie Hornby, who is married to Reverend Mark Hornby. And um, her daughter is also serving. So next we can see a, a grass hut here. And um, I did not bring my personal notes. Um, so I'm just doing this ad lib. But I believe that's, um, can you zoom in on the pictures, Matt? Or can't you? Maybe not. It's OK. So I believe that this is my Uncle Bud and Margaret, or Aunt Peg. And they went to Chichi Castanango, and when she first saw her house, she burst into tears because it wasn't very clean. But they worked on it, and when we went there, I was in about seventh grade, our whole family went to visit them. We had so much fun with Uncle Bud because it was like, we were bouncing up and down in the back of his Jeep. And my mom and dad said later they were scared to death because you could look over the side of these roads. And if the bus or uh, the van we were in had happened to go off, and there was just basically room at the time for their tires, we would have dropped thousands of feet probably. And it wound back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> And, and we were so delighted as kids because the road was so bumpy. And every time we had a bump, we'd go, yippee, <laughs> yippee. And we didn't realize there was really danger at the time. I think we did later. <laughs> but anyway, the open air market was wonderful. My doll, um, I didn't think to bring my Guatemalan doll. It's here. But so many adventures, and one of the reasons I'm telling you the adventures is because it helped me serve Jesus because everywhere the Davises went, they shared smiles. They saw the best in life. They didn't like to see the worst. They didn't say, like the ones who are alive today, try not to focus on COVID. Try to focus on God's protective hand and pray and ask your friends to pray it will happen and trust him and serve him and ask for that hedge of protection around you. But to get back to them, um, my Uncle Bud and my Aunt Evelyn Davis, serving in Chichi Castanango, took us to the open air market. And I remember there were people with pots, like 30 pots on their back, carrying 30 pots, and they had the old fashioned saws. Now remember, this was over 50 years ago. <laughs> almost 60, because I'm 67. But they had these old-fashioned saws, and the women would all go to bathe in the river. So that was, um, that was something we wanted to do and um, because it was a chance to witness. And they had, a, they had this old kind of like oven. It was baked out of adobe, or I don't know what, but our meals were cooked in this old kind of adobe oven, I think, if my memory serves me correctly. And it was very primitive. But they were so happy. And as kids, we, were, we just didn't notice it. And um, so that was very wonderful. And then um, there was Carl and Agnes Davis. And they... We're serving with team missions. And David and John would, um, no, wait. 
Well, I might have my aunts and uncles mixed up, but you know, only God is perfect. So I don't have the list in front of me. May I, can we go to the next slide? Uh, so then there was Joseph and Mary, and they did missionary training. So um, they did not go to the mission field. Mary was a nurse at Blodgett, and she became the head nurse. And then there was Joseph, but all of them lived miraculous lives. And I just, I want to share a few more things, and then I'm going to end. But if you look at the map, you can see all the places they were serving. So for a ladies' guild next year, I'm hoping we can enlarge that map and show all the places uh, that our family is serving now, our extended family. And so um, with Carl Davis, he, he was going to die, I believe, as a baby. And Grandma sat there, and she said, Oh, dear, Lord, please, please, please. It still makes me cry. Please don't let my baby die. We don't know what's wrong. He won't take the bottle. He won't take my breast milk. And then as she was praying, I think she said, the way I remember her telling me, she said, Lord, I pray the prayer of submission, not my will, but thine be done. And at that moment, God gave her an idea. What do you think the idea was? The idea was to basically puree the food. And the doctor had said there was no hope and this baby was dying, as I recall. And she mashed up bananas and enough that he wouldn't choke. And I don't know if she added milk or what, but I don't know if he was allergic to milk. I don't remember the exact formula, but she just started feeding a mashed up food that was basically mush. And he grew to be, as I remember, six feet four inches tall. So if you don't believe in miracles, God is living proof through Carl, unless it was Ray, <laughs> that miracles still happen. And David and Mary didn't think they could have a child. And um, my dad put her on Synthroid, I think, and they had Jonathan, and she was 40. And the same thing happened with me. The doctor said I could never have kids. Dad put me on iodized salt, and Synthroid and Dawn and Cheryl were born. And Cheryl was born so fast after Dawn, it, it was an accident. <laughs> Dad said I had to stay on it while I nursed. So I think he just wanted me to have another one right away. <laughs> so my dad was wonderful. And Tom Hayes came from... Um, he was with Precept Munitions. They were in Guatemala till they got chased out. And um, when they got across the border, there were murders going on, and they were robbing and pillaging, and everyone had to leave. Uh, and when they got out of the country, they discovered that there was a boy stashed in the back, and he had hidden all that way. So they adopted him. And uh, that, that, too, was a miracle that that boy's life was saved. And I, I don't know what ha would have happened if they had discovered him earlier. But they were allowed um, to keep him. So um, Peggy served, and um, Dick Robinson, and Tita, and Dick Robinson. And they were their kids, and um, I, the last I heard, they were up by Milwaukee serving Elm Book Church, I think, up there. But they, they may be retired now, for all I know, or at a different church. So then in my own personal family, uh, there was um, Bonnie 
she married Reverend Mark Hornby, and I love her with all my heart. She helped me put this presentation together. She just had skin scan cancer surgery on her nose with a big skin graft, so please pray for her as she recovers. And yet she took time to help me. Isn't she a wonderful sister? <laughs> and Mark is serving in Gastonia, G Georgia, I believe, and their daughter, Michelle, they're all technology experts, but she is serving. And um, she married a pastor as well. And uh, I think she wants to get pregnant again, so pray she can, please, and carry that baby through. Bonnie had such a wonderful family in Mark, and they had six kids. And they used to have their own band because they could all play musical instruments. And they were all gifted in singing. So have lots of kids. <laughs> If you want a band of your own, <laughs> that's kind of a family joke. And Mary and Bonnie are kind of in this contest to see who can have the most kids. Well, that's my sister Mary. But in Bonnie's family, there is um, Rhett and Kathy Carson. He's also a pastor, and he's serving. And Bonnie had a list for me to read. And I'm sorry, Bonnie, maybe we could place it online, but I left it home. So all their kids are serving in some capacity. My sister Mary is just as wonderful, and she and Jack. Um, Jack's been a pastor. He went to Hope College in, in Holland, Michigan. We love the Tulip Festival there. I'm telling you a little about the miracles in our family, but specifics because sometimes we think we have to reach people for Christ by pounding the gospel into them, by telling them about salvation, and that is very effective sometimes. But many of my relatives believe that by being kind and loving and sharing a smile or doing a good deed, if it doesn't put your life in jeopardy, and some of them did put their lives in jeopardy to serve Christ, that might be more effective. Just getting to know your neighbor, inviting them over for dinner, inviting them to church. So Mary and Jack, their daughter, is serving. And what's kind of neat is Jack preaches in the same church that Tanner and Kristen preach in. And I think our family is actively praying for more pastors. And so, um, or preachers in our family, or missionaries. And um, why don't you start today? If that's your desire, it starts with a single seed. A single seed that I think I'm going to close in prayer with. Um, hopefully I haven't forgotten anybody. Dear Lord, for anyone who's hearing my voice today, I humbly pray I can say this without crying. But the need is so great, Lord. The world is lost and needs you. And if we can let our light shine for you, as Charles sang, if we can adhere to Jesus loves me and follow that verse. Lord, I remember now when I was in Guatemala, Daddy taught us to sing it in Spanish. So we could go around, and we had to have interpreters for us at all the meetings we spoke at. But all the natives there were drawn to us because we were singing their song that they knew and loved in Spanish. And then he taught us how great they are, thou art in Spanish. And Lord, give us ideas that can reach others for you today. Maybe it's inviting them sailing. We maybe can't do it during COVID. And wear life jackets, right, Lord? But, Lord, you're my best friend. And I talk to you every day. And for the Rose or Kenoya needs shared, and for the needs shared, when I get up in the night if I can't sleep, or maybe use the restroom, I just say a quick, I call them flash prayers, Lord. Lord, be with Peggy Nash and bless her. Be with... Dottie, or Lillian, or Marco, or Ginger, or be with each spoken and unspoken request. Lord, be with those who are suffering and hurting. Be with those with COVID. Be with those, Lord. And Lord, I tend to pray for an hour sometimes, so I'm going to end now. But Lord, 
Bless our church. Bless all churches everywhere. Bless the missionaries. Protect them now. Help them live and serve you bravely and live long lives, we pray. So future generations may serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. And before we end, God brought one more thing to mind. When my relatives had to flee, or I can't remember if they had to leave Pakistan, but they made sure that there were natives in each of these countries, thank you, Matt, to serve. So now the late natives are leading the churches. We don't want to put anyone in danger listing maybe the churches. I would want to check with my cousins for that. But all these natives in these different countries. And I remember one story um, that um, these guerrillas came in and they said, we're going to shoot you unless you denounce Christ. And they said, we will not denounce Christ. And the whole congregation joined them. Mothers, women, children, men, little boys, little girls, old men and women. And they said we would rather be shot than denounce Christ. I don't know if I would have the courage to do that. I might fudge a little just to live. Lord willing, God would give me the grace if I ever faced it. And I don't think they were shot. I think they were so shocked, the soldiers or whoever was going to kill them, that they just walked away, as I recall it. And many of my relatives, especially Tommy Hayes, could tell you miracle stories that he knows personally. But I'll end with something fun, because I don't want to end with tears. <laughs> My dad had a snake skin from Africa, and I don't remember the story because I was just born there. My mom got sick and we came back to the States. But my dad was a medical doctor and he had worked at a leper colony and all these natives were afraid. They were afraid of these snakes that would come to eat their children or they were afraid they would. And somehow they caught that snake. And Daddy brought the snake skin home, which was like, it was long. I, my daughter, um, I gave it to her, suggested maybe the Smithsonian could use it someday. But it's long and it's fragile now. But it, I'm sure it was 15 or 16 feet. I don't know, maybe it was longer. We'd have to measure it again. But the natives were drawn to Christ because dad was brave enough to try and help him get rid of that snake. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what he told me. So with joy, look on the world. Remember, tomorrow you'll get free lights if you come in the narthex. Uh, you have to wear a mask and sit six feet apart. And this will also be online. So I'm not sure I'll say the same thing. It's at 11 o'clock following Rose Aerobics. And Peggy Nash speaks on Wednesday, um, and she'll share her personal testimony and uh, of how she came to know Christ. Those meetings will not be taped. When I asked her if she wanted to speak uh, online, I think she declined. So, um, since everything revolves around Green Lake, on August 2, 1961, I was at a child's meeting. I, I was born in 1953, maybe I was about eight. And this lady said, Jesus loves you. He loved you so much. He died on the cross for your sins. And she had like one of those old flannel graph boards and she showed Christ kind of being born and then a few of the highlights of his life and then dying on the cross. And she said, would anyone like to come forward? 
uh, and receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And at that moment, I just ran forward, and I was crying and crying. And I said, I didn't know Jesus loved me. If, it, if anybody ever told me, I never heard it before. And I went home, and I went, Daddy, Daddy, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And I was just a little girl. And they thought, oh, it might fade. But it has never faded in all the years since. And part of it was due to the encouragement of family, friends, and my church. All of us have had major disappointments in our life. But when our friends or family might fail us, remember, Jesus is always there for us. And I guess I'm looking at these stained glass windows when it's my time to go, if I've ever offended anyone. God, forgive me. Forgive us all. Sunday's sermon, I hope you'll listen to it. Pastor said, oh, maybe it was the outdoor one, if we've sinned against someone, God, forgive us. Yes, God, forgive us. Love you all. Think of me dancing. <laughs> Bye.